Let's talk about common intention constructive trust. The important cases for this area are Stat and Dalton and Johnson and Kernan. If you want the summary of the case of Stat and Dalton, you can watch my previous video. Here, we mainly focus on the application of common intention constructive trust in sole ownership and co-ownership cases. So let's start with sole ownership cases. Let's say we have A, who is the sole legal owner of the property. For the position in equity, the presumption of equity follows the law applies, so A is also the sole beneficial owner of the property. Let's say comes B. B wants to claim beneficial interest in the property, so B has to rebut the presumption of equity follows the law. B has to establish common intention constructive trust. B can do so by overcoming two hurdles. For the first hurdle, B has to show that both parties intend him to have some beneficial interest in the property. So B has to show express or inferred common intention, as well as detrimental reliance by him. Financial contribution to the property can be treated as detrimental reliance. So having established these two elements, we move on to the second hurdle. That is to ascertain the quantity of the beneficial interest. We have to look at the party's whole course of conduct to infer or impute common intention as to the quantity of each of their shares. So this is how common intention constructive trust applies in the sole ownership context. Let's move on to the co-ownership context. So let's say we have a property that has been conveyed in joint names of A and B. So A and B can be legal joint tenants or tenants in common. Let's say A has 80% of the shares and B has 20%. So for the position in equity, the presumption of equity follows the law applies again. So A and B can be beneficial joint tenants or beneficial tenants in common with the same amount of shares. So let's say B claims otherwise. So B again has to rebut the presumption of equity follows the law. B has to establish common intention constructive trust. This time, there is no need to overcome the first hurdle. It has been automatically overcome because the house has already been conveyed in joint names. But B has to overcome the second hurdle, which concerns qualification of the beneficial interest. So we have to look at the party's whole course of conduct to infer or impute their common intention with respect to the quantity of each of their beneficial shares. So this is how common intention constructive trust applies in the co-ownership context. And this is all we have to know about common intention constructive trust. Thanks for watching.